Hi, and welcome to Voice with Julia. Today, we're gonna to be talking about getting our voices back after we've been sick. This past week, I've been very sick. I lost my voice for about five days, couldn't even speak, and just a couple days ago, I started experimenting with singing, but it is very difficult. So in this video, we're gonna discuss some ways, both physically and mentally, that you can start getting your voice back sooner. been sick there's going to be a lot of hurdles to overcome because you haven't been using certain muscles for a few days so think about it like this it's kind of like if you uh, stayed in bed for 10 days and didn't move when you get up your legs would be so wobbly it would be like you didn't know how to walk again things would feel weird you would be uncoordinated so if you think about not singing and not vocalizing on a regular basis it's going to feel similar. So just take the sick away for a second. Just the time element of not vocalizing for seven to 10 days is going to already set you up to be uncoordinated. Now, what we have to do is we have to accept this mentally. This is the biggest piece of the puzzle because if you expect in the days returning when your voice returns and feels better, if you expect that you're going to hit the ground running, you're gonna be disappointed. So it's very important to accept that going into it. So when you first start to vocalize, you know things are gonna be uncoordinated. Things are not gonna sound quite normal and that is okay, okay? Because when you accept that, then you have a really great place to work from. The other thing I'm going to say is that when you are getting your voice back, it is really helpful to have an external set of ears, or if not as good as an external set of ears because of recording technology, but you can also record yourself. Recording yourself is obviously better to doing nothing, but because of recording technology, it's not quite as good as an external set of ears that you trust, that you trust, that's important, okay. Um, and the reason is because after we've been sick, often we've got stuffy head, um, just achy feelings in the body. Maybe there's some muscles that have gotten a little more tight than normal. And so we're not gonna be as inclined to use our voices the way that we normally are. And because our hearing might be a little impaired from all the blockage in the ears and in the sinuses, we may not understand what we're hearing and feeling inside our own bodies. So it's really helpful to record yourself and or have that extra set of ears outside to help get you back onto form. So anything I say in this video is very important, but keep in mind that this is a really important ingredient to applying all of these things that I'm gonna talk about because you do want a way to measure and keep yourself in the bounds of what you know you can do. And if you don't have that external feedback, it's really hard because first of all, you haven't been singing for a few days, you've lost coordination, and you might have impaired hearing from the ears and the sinus drainage. So you have to understand what you're hearing and you have to then know how to fix it. And the way that you can do that best is by relying on someone that you trust, either a voice teacher or a voice coach or yourself, if you really do know your voice and know your instrument. So after you've been sick and you've lost your voice, what happens is the voice wants to repair itself. And so it brings a there's a lot of inflammation that happens in this area. And so when you first go to vocalize, it's going to be maybe not even stiff, maybe it will feel easy, and that's usually because the cords are slightly swollen. Now, a little bit of swelling is not always a bad thing. That doesn't always mean that you need to continue to rest. In fact, it is my belief that you don't want to rest too much because there is this interstitial fluid that builds up after healing and after losing your voice, laryngitis specifically, um, that you're going to need to work out through gentle vocalizations. So 
the way that you know that you're ready to start getting back and doing this is that the voice is sitting back up where it normally is. Like mine is finally returned to its normal tessitura of high rather than target down here. Okay, so if it returns to its normal tessitura, but it might feel a little veiled or a little fuzzy, um, but it doesn't feel pressed and it feels easy. So this is how I know I'm always ready to sing because I will have this ease in the sound. It almost feels too easy, like a child. Like I could just go, ah, oh, ah, oh, and it just feels very easy. Then I know that I'm ready to start vocalizing, okay? So first you wanna analyze your speaking voice, analyze how things feel, and then you'll know whether you're ready to proceed with the next step. So the next step that we wanna do is we wanna just spend as much time as possible, maybe a whole day, seriously, a whole day is not too much, to really hum and massage the vocal cords, making sure that we're not putting any resonance pressure on the voice or doing anything funny. We're just simply working on that nice, easy phonation and light registration. This is gonna help stretch the cords gently and feel. it feels really, really nice. You can't rush this process, okay? So let's say you have a concert in a few days. You need to start getting yourself back at least four or five days before that concert. Um, preferably more, but that's kind of a bare minimum because this takes some time to get you back into form. So I like to start with just very easy humming. Now, humming form is important. This cannot be overlooked. Your tongue should be entirely on your palate, the whole tongue. Okay, and then you're gonna feel some vibrations here. You wanna feel that you separate your head into two different quadrants. So when we start humming, you don't wanna feel any vibrations here. Okay, you want to feel them here. Now, if you're a tenor, baritone, or bass, and you're singing in the lower part, in the chest voice, you may feel resonance here, and that's fine. However, try to always balance it with that light feeling, and you may feel it here but you may just get a sense that you're singing very softly. So I like to start with a very easy two note pattern. And we're just gonna do. Now I make sure that I breathe through my nose and I make sure that I just try to start as gently as possible. I don't take this very high when I first do this. Very light around the middle voice, just kind of up and down gently. The other thing to address is our breathing because our breathing is going to get really out of whack, especially if you've had a chest cold like I have. Okay, not, not COVID. I did get tested, I was worried, but... Um, I did get a chest cold, and so that can bring up a lot of things and sort of contract our lungs and mess up our breathing system that maybe previously was much better. So we wanna take also a little bit of time to feel that. So with this hum, you can really feel where you are on the uh, support spectrum. So if you feel like this was hard, and that your ribs were collapsing and you were really out of breath, then it might be time to take a step back and we'll do some breathing exercises where you breathe in through the nose, expand fully, really feel that diaphragm contraction, and then out. And you want to extend the exhale twice as long as the inhale, okay? So that's a good way to check and see how you're feeling if the breath starts to get uh, locked up on you. Then you can start taking this hum. As you get lower in your voice, it's going to want to do this. You have to resist the temptation to do that, okay? Because what we're working on is thinning out the cords and getting them less stuck and less inflamed. There's there's some of that um, bloated cords, I call them, okay? They're, they're retaining a little bit of water and so they might be a little bit stiff. 
And so you want to keep that head voice element even as you come low. So if you're tenor baritone or bass and you're doing Okay, I don't have that note. But you can hear I'm vocalizing in a tenor baritone or bass range and I'm still able to keep that head tone dominant. So I'm not going but the note I can't reach, but it's that one. Okay, so that's really important because it is possible to sing in head voice dominance even as you get lower. Um, so this is a very good way to start. And I also like doing these exercises in the shower, you know, while I'm just around the house, kind of testing, feeling how things are. And then I can move on a little bit if I start to feel that that is going well. The next exercise I like to incorporate before I even think about singing is this buzz. And this helps coordinate the breath a little bit more energetically than the hum, all right? And I like to do these descending patterns. I always like descending patterns because you have to start as lightly as possible on the top and maintain that as you come down. So that's why I always pick this five, four, three, two, one. So we're gonna start. Now you're gonna resist any temptation to go and feel connected here. This, this feeling of connection here is very deceptive, okay? And especially after you've been sick, you don't wanna start there. You wanna just feel this ethereal light thing, okay? So the minimum potential force, that is all that it requires. If you have, feel like you have to push or add anything, scale it back a little bit and see how little effort you need to actually make the sound come forth. You'll be surprised. And again, it's keeping in this quadrant of vibration, not in this quadrant. And this is really going to help. If you take this process that I've given you really nice and slowly, like expand this over 40 minutes, you're going to notice a huge difference in your voice, okay? So the key takeaways from this is that you want to, first of all, make sure that you're healthy enough to even start this process. You start with light hums. If that feels difficult, you add some breath work, okay? You should add some breath work anyways, but let's just say step one, step two. Add some extra breath work, okay, if your lungs have been affected. And number three is you want to do this coordinated tongue out vibration to coordinate both the head resonance and the body support. And if you do these for a good day or maybe a couple days, you're going to be in much better shape to start your regular vocalizations again. Remember, slow and steady wins the race. So you want to take your time getting your chords ready to sing again. Okay. Feel better, everybody and I will see you soon. If you've enjoyed this video today, I invite you to subscribe below, and I also invite you to come visit me at voicewithjulia.com, where there is a lot of information and upcoming events that you can be in the know about first.